There is no better time to be in the woods than in the fall with a bow watching for deer. There's a lot to bow hunting that a lot of hunters enjoy. Next week, we're going to talk about the deer side of it. But this week, we're going to talk about the equipment, how to choose it. We're going to look at targets. We're going to check out some inventions that are amazing, or are they amusing? Oh, we have a lot more. So you stay tuned. I'm Fred Trost with ideas on archery for the practical sportsman. Hunting white-tailed deer with a bow and arrow is an ultimate challenge. Now, what makes it so tough is that the hunter has to get close to the deer, very close. A heavy compound bow with a well, 70 or 80-pound draw weight can reach out 30, 40 yards if the bow hunter is a good shot. But lighter weight bows demand that the hunter be closer, 20 yards or so from the deer. Now, some states and provinces have regulations requiring a minimum 45-pound draw weight, a lot of women, teenagers, and even men who have physical disabilities cannot pull back and shoot a 45-pound bow accurately. But with lighter weight bows at shorter ranges, they can take deer as well as anybody. Should there be a minimum restriction on bow hunters? Well, before you make up your mind, listen to the story of one hunter who gears up with a lightweight bow. Now, a lot of people are going to say, can't be done. <laughs> What was, what was the draw weight on your bow? 28 pounds. Now, haven't people told you that that's not heavy enough to hunt deer with? No, Nobody's because I've that? taken 10, so they kind of believe I can do it now in the family, yeah. 10 deer with a 28 pound mm -hmm. bow? Is and not only that, I've seen two of them fall, you know, hit them hard enough that they fell within range of being able to see them. So. How close do you shoot? About 20 yards, this one was at 20, yeah. So you don't shoot much more, you don't do 30-yard no, shots or no. anything? No, I don't think I'd get enough penetration. I only got about six inches probably, hit one long. But that's, that's really Did all you need. That's right. He only went about 300 yards, I guess. Oh. That's, I mean, 10 deer in how many years? About 18 bow hunting, but I gun hunt also, and I've taken 10 with a gun. So I've got 20 all total. Are those bucks, does, what's the... Uh, about 14 bucks and some does, but some of the bucks were small ones, you know. Not, <laughs> naturally not like this. But like, what do you call a small one? Well, button bugs, spike horns, a lot of spike horns up okay, in the state well, we're land. On, yeah. We're on the same wavelength then. Yeah, right. I thought maybe you were working down to no. eights and tens. No. You know. Well, that's great. Jeez, I, I, I never dreamed, you know, coming up here that you got this with a 28-pound bow. I would have thought that maybe you'd start cranking the bow up to 35 or... I cranked it up one time a few years ago when I'd been to the gym and worked out, and the first deer that came in on a nice, cool morning, I had trouble getting the bow pulled back. I had to do one of these big... Mm. I said, put it back down where I can pull it comfortably and... And shoot accurately. There. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Darn. Great story. Yeah. Let's have a big round of applause for Linda Luna with a 28-pounder. Her 10th, 10th deer. I'm, I'm impressed. I understand also it's going to be probably the largest deer for a woman bow hunter. The uh, recording period's not over till the end of March, but it may be a new record. Awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> Using a lightweight bow for deer isn't a problem if the hunter restricts shooting to 20 yards or less. There are two reasons. One, the arrow will maintain enough velocity to guarantee sufficient penetration to kill the deer humanely. And two, a reasonably good archer can maintain accuracy within 20 yards. Bows with heavier draw weights are preferred, though, because they shoot arrows faster, and faster arrows don't have the arching trajectory of slower arrows, which makes them easier to shoot accurately. In this quest for speed, bow hunters have done several things. They've gone to arrows that are smaller in diameter and lighter weight, They've gone to compound bow designs that have oblong cams instead of round wheels. Those oblong cams snap the string faster when they're released. And archers have gone to release aids that clip onto the string instead of using their fingers to release the arrow. But what effect do these improvements have on arrow accuracy? The Easton Aluminum Company, which dominates the market with aluminum arrows, produced a video where a variety of bows and arrows and releases were photographed shooting arrows in super slow motion. Let's just look at three of these. First, a bow shot with fingers. In slow motion, you can see the string rolls off the shooter's fingers, so it starts a little off-center. Halfway out the bow, it's clear off the arrow rest, which bends the arrow sideways. This straightens out after the arrow leaves the bow. The flight stabilizes, 
But what happens in the split second after the shooter lets the arrow fly looks pretty scary. With that kind of stress on an arrow, you can see why the shooter has to release the arrow consistently every time. Otherwise, accuracy will be inconsistent. Now let's take a look at a cam bow, the fastest type on the market today. We'll solve the sideways motion of the string by using a mechanical release aid. But oblong cams on a compound snap the string so fast at the beginning of the acceleration that the arrow actually bows up vertically. The veins flap like the fins on a fish because the arrow is oscillating up and down. With heavy draw weights and cams, the arrows have to be matched perfectly with the bow, or that fast acceleration will bend an arrow way out of shape in the first few inches of travel, and a mismatched arrow won't shoot accurately. Now, the third example, a heavier, larger diameter hunting arrow shot with a release aid. This is close to perfect arrow travel without warping or bending. A wheel bow doesn't have the initial acceleration quite as fast as a cam bow, and the heavier arrow gets a slower launch than the lighter arrow, but it releases clean, holds its shape, and for most shooters, this combination will be more accurate. Now, all three of these can be accurate. The kind of equipment you choose is up to you, as long as it's tuned and balanced and you stick within the limitations of penetration and accuracy, how you gear up is your choice. But how you shoot when you're hunting is your responsibility, so choose wisely and shoot responsibly. That's the key to gearing up. How do you build your muscles for archery without pulling your bow? Well, Saunders came up with a perfect solution. It's an exerciser they call the power pull, exercising the same muscles you use for archery. The beauty of it is you can develop your bow pulling muscles anytime, anywhere. Saunders is also marketing a device for release shooters who want to practice dry snapping their releases, something you cannot do on a bow without an arrow. Dry snapping will crack the limbs. Again, you can practice with your release anytime, anyplace, without arrows. As for practical targets, Ed Urban from Owasso tried stuffing a feed sack full of plastic bags. You know those paper or plastic stuff from the supermarket, he found that the plastic bags have tremendous arrow stopping ability and recycling these bags takes a little of the guilt out of asking for plastic at the supermarket. Ed got this idea from Tom Phelps from Coldwater who found a source for scraps of hollow fill. It's an insulation material for sleeping bags and coats. He stuffs hollow fill into burlap bags. Now we found both targets stop arrows well and the best thing is that the arrows come out easily. Two fingers does it. No, no, no. Actually, the best thing is you can make these targets yourself, and they cost little or nothing. It can't get any more practical than that. Explain to me this uh, third lens you have in your glasses, Earl. Well, I shoot underneath my glasses. I look very close to my nose, so I use the lens to be able to see my sight pen. You mean, put your, can you just pull up and draw so we, we can look at I it this way? Hand. And use your hands. Okay. So you draw and you're using the peep sight. Okay. Well, that's right. So, oh, I see. That moves your glasses up and you're looking. Is that like a bifocal? Yes. And you look right down through the sight pan. Yep. Interesting. Where'd you get that? I made it. <laughs> you did? Yes. What kind of material is the lens? It's a plastic safety glass type of material. Huh. Normal manufacturer of eyeglasses. Now, when you're shooting, what does the target look like? Perfectly good. It does? Yes. Yes. Target's fine. And so is the sight, the whole thing I can see there? this. See, my glasses, my prescription is I can see about this far. And then from that point on, I can't see for the next foot or so real clear. Hmm. That's where my sight pen is. So I use this third lens to be able to see my sight pen. And it's clear at a distance. Do you use this for hunting? Mm, this is, I just made it this summer. What do you think? You can use it for hunting? Yes. <laughs> okay, well, good. Be <laughs> interesting to see how you do. Yeah. Better than last year, I hope. <laughs> bow hunters have always had the problem of where to put their bows while they're waiting for deer, which can be hours. Sport Shield Manufacturing developed a unique bow holder they call the Rest. It straps around your leg. The bottom wheel of your compound rests in the pouch. The top is held by a hook. Leaves your hands free, but the bow is ready. What do you think for $18? Amazing or amusing? Another problem archers have is keeping the arrow on the arrow rest. 
tip your bow and the arrow falls off, which can scare a deer and blow your chances. To solve this, the stay put arrow holder was developed, a small piece of soft silicone material that holds the arrow in place, but when you shoot it, it flies out of the way. No effect on the arrow flight. At $14, what do you think? Amazing or amusing? And here's a wild product marketed by Scott Yarborough of Sky Manufacturing. This is the new Ultra Loader 2000, which is an automatic arrow loader, which allows you to shoot two arrows in as little time as about three seconds. When you shoot the first arrow, the energy stored in the limbs triggers this latch mechanism, which allows the second over arrow to flip over onto your rest right in front of your string. At that point, all you have to do is to push the string into the knock, it'll hold it there, and then as you draw back with, with either fingers or release, you, the clamp opens up out of the way and you're ready to shoot instantaneously. How long does it take to get off two shots? Knock, draw, shoot. That took exactly three seconds. You let go. The spring is released that turns the second arrow over directly in line with the string. You push the string into the knock. The arrow holder flips out of the way when you draw. There's no way your eye can catch what's happening at regular speed, but when we slow it down, you can see. The hinged mechanism is simple enough so that it works flawlessly. All you do is engage the string onto the knock and pull back. Your second arrow is ready. It's an intriguing concept, but at $69, will most archers find the Ultra Loader amazing or amusing? Now that's a hefty rag. Yeah, it, <laughs> I cut it off to use the rattle up, you know, for rattling purposes. Now, do you, you just you just use rattling in bow season? No, I use it during firearm season, early firearm season. Here, show me how. This everybody wants to see how how somebody rattles. Okay. Well, usually I'll get near a bush and I'll shake the trees a little bit. Uh huh. And I'll well, this is good you know, tap on the ground a little bit and then just play around a little bit. That's and all the louder? No, just, then I wait a couple minutes then I'll, you know, and shake the trees a little bit and then I'll, for about 30 seconds. And then I'll give it a good five minutes waiting time. And if I don't hear anything, you know. But not much more louder than that. It's usually in the quiet woods, that's loud enough. Mike Henderson from Jackson has become quite a trophy buck hunter in recent years. Not so much by how he rattles, but by where he hunts deer. He looks for thick cover, the thicker the better, areas that tend to flood in the fall. Southern Michigan swamps riddled with puddles and high spots. In September, when we taped this, Mike's favorite hunting spot was all high and dry, but in November, it's wet and soggy, and it's not too far from some large cornfields. Well, after about a third of a mile or so of walking, here we are, Mike. Uh, the cornfields have come to an end. Now we have what looks like woods or swamp, or what are we going into? Uh, the creeks here runs back into the swamp, probably about a quarter mile back in. This is a woods that's been logged off about five years ago. Mm -hmm. Five years ago? Five. 10 years ago, which was thinned out quite well. Oh, so it wasn't like clear cut? No. It was no. just thinned out. Right. What do we have here water-wise? What are we talking about hunting season to the end of October? Um, end of October, you have close to an inch of water right where I'm standing right now, straight north and south hmm. from the overload from the rivers. So this is where a lot of hunters would stop. Sure. They're not going to get their leather boots wet. They really don't want to slog back into this. Right, most of them would sit up in this up and land open woods to the northwest of me here. Uh -huh. So they'd be sitting up there, and you got the idea, if they're all up there, you're going to go into the swamp. Right. So here's where you start going squish, squish, squish. Right, here's where I'll hop in, this, walk in the stream, and walk right down towards the swamp, which okay. is a lot quieter in the morning so than you trying to crash through all the brush. Okay, so you look for, through the, for the path of least resistance. Right. And you figure that's basically what the deer do too? Sure. Yeah, now where it's dry and where they're, they feel real safe. Okay, now how far are we gonna go into this? Uh, well, the swamp's probably a quarter mile down. Okay, so we gotta get into that. Right. 
Well, now there's a trickle of water in this ditch, but in November, Mike walks through the stream to get to his blind at five or so in the morning. He imitates a deer walking in the swamp by going for 20 or 30 yards, then stopping for a minute or so. He passes by a lot of good territory. How do you know where to put, where to set up? I mean, how, you, you obviously can't see trees. You don't see bubbles where deer have been walking through. I mean, no. how, how do you figure it out? Well, I just try to think of where they would go, the path of the least resistance through the swamp to get away from the people during the heavy hunting seasons. Are you trying to get between two places that are hooked up with high areas of dry land? Or what? Yeah, basically that and where they can bed down and be dry and safe and secure. Do you find anything in the way of sign back there when you're scouting? Do you scout? Yeah, swamp? I scout. I scout year round. I but what do you find? Watch some deer patterns. Um, I find a few, you know, deer sign back in the swamps themselves. Not a lot. Looks like you got a a run through here, Mike. Has yeah. this is this run worth anything to you? Does this doesn't stop you? Um, not during gun season. Maybe early bow season. Um, but later on, the bigger ones will start moving back. Uh, a lot of does and younger ones run these upland runs. And you said is that, this is a north-south run right here? Right. Along the river. Mm -hmm. Oh, look what we got over here. Look what we got. Now, this doesn't get you excited, Mike? Huh? Huh? You sure about this? <laughs> it gets me excited to know that there's a buck in the area. Yeah. Um, Fresh rub. But I surely would count on sitting by it during gun season. OK, so gun season, this isn't. Yeah, they've. Uh, Oh, kind of touched up, here. yeah, touched up over here, started rubbing right here. But this isn't enough to get you cranked to hunt right here. No. Then we're going back. We're going farther. This is not good enough. Some parts of this woods are a floodplain. You can see the water line on these trees in this low area. But deer tend to travel on the higher ground as much as they can, which is where Mike usually sees them. This is the spot. This is where the, the big one was was taken? Yeah. So right this here. was the tree. Yep. You were sitting here and the buck came from down there? Yep, from the south. I could see him back in the, in the fall time. A lot of these leaves are gone. I, this is where I could hear him, mm -hmm. actually. And I was grunting him up and he kept coming closer and closer. And finally I got just the barely front end uh, shot of him. Where right. you could see him. Right. But you heard him for quite a while. Oh, I sure did. Well, this looks like a great spot sitting here. Your your feet would be in the water in the fall, or no? Yeah, in the, during gut season, they would be in the water right here. And I'd keep my waders on while I was sitting here. Okay, well, it looks like you, you say you've got several deer here. That's a, right. Is that your tree stand? Yeah, this is my for my bow stand. Now, when I'll wear my waders up here, I'll take them off and then sit down there and get my other clothes on. And I got a eight-point sitting there last year. Hmm with my bow. So this is what we're looking at in all this green vegetation would be water. Right. This wet meadow is next to the spot where Mike Henderson got his trophy 13 point last year. Commander of Bucks scored as a 13 point. 12, 13, okay, 13 point. What was the situation here in 1990 compared to 1978? Does this buck follow the same pattern that they all have? No. Um, Opening day, I went out and I sat in the swamps and I picked out a little bit farther location I thought would be good. And I could hear a lot of splashing going around, but I couldn't see nothing. So the second day of the season, I sat over right closer where I could hear the splashing. And um, right before daylight, I started using a little bit of a grunt call. Mm -hmm. you know, just when it's just getting light. And then I started hearing some splashing and then it'd stop and then splashing, then it stopped, and it's so thick, you gotta really wait it out. And uh, then all I could see was the antlers. You know, that's all I could see was move up and down, and it seemed like a long time, which probably wasn't. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just saw the barely, the part of, front part of his body, and I shot, and he ran right towards me. Huh. So Mike usually takes an hour or so to get back to his blind in the morning. You can imagine how long it takes to wrestle a big buck back out of the swamp. He often has to float it part of the way. So it's, it, once you shoot a deer back there, it doesn't get any easier. I mean, no, no, it's pretty hard getting them out, but it, it's a pretty good success, <laughs> right? 
Mike Henderson has a good success rate, but he works for it. Here's a nine point he got a couple years ago, and here's his 13 point from the second day of last year's gun season. If you're gonna try swamp hunting, there are a few tips Mike says are worth considering. First of all, look for good thick swamps near areas that are heavily hunted, and don't expect to see a lot of deer sign because they don't leave much sign in cover like this. You're gonna to wanna to hunt on the high ground because that's where the deer will come to. Listen for them shuffling through the wet ground and the puddles, but never, ever shoot at sounds. Make sure you see them clearly before you shoot. Carry in whatever you need to be comfortable. It's going to be a long day, and be patient. The deer are likely to move at all times during the day. That rule of thumb applies whether you hunt the highlands or the swamps. And one more thing. The, uh, Captain Amo reports some good king fishing salmon in the river. By the way, we fished at the end of last week with Big John of Big John Downriggers. Big John caught a 30 pound three ouncer earlier this week in the tournament, but he didn't win, but he was darn close. Well, make sure you get outdoors this weekend. It might be a warm one, but it's a great place to be. We'll see you right back here next week. How you gear up is your choice, but how you shoot when you're hunting is your responsibility, so choose wisely and shoot responsibly. That's the key to gearing up.